Welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, I am going to be talking about nerves and anxiety during a court appearance. And I am going to be talking to you about strategies that you can employ to manage your nerves and your anxiety. And the first thing I want to say is that there is nothing wrong with being nervous. Being nervous and anxious is a universal experience. Most lawyers that I know are a bag of nerves uh, during their court appearance and just before a court appearance. I know that when I used to go to court, I would feel anxious, I would feel stressed just before going into court and during the first few minutes of the court appearance. So nerves is a universal experience. Being nervous suggests that you care about your performance and you care about the outcome for your client. So there's nothing wrong with being nervous. The problem, uh, nerves and anxiety becomes a problem when the nerves and the anxiety is debilitating. It has an impact on your performance in court. And so in this video, I'm going to be giving you some strategies to deal with nerves during the court appearance and just before the court appearance. I want to talk about how nerves do actually impact a performance in court. And the first thing I would say is that nerves do impact your cognitive abilities. So, for example, memory. Your nerves will affect your ability to recall information, such as the question that you wanted to ask the witness, the arguments that you wanted to make before your tribunal, even the name of your client, and um, how to address the judge. All of those things may go out of the window because your brain will become mush when you're extremely nervous and anxious. Being anxious and nervous can also have a physical impact. So we've all experienced those butterflies in our stomach when we're really anxious or nervous. Um, the dry mouth or throat, trembling hands, sweating, being physically sick. I've, I've seen lawyers being physically sick before a court appearance. Fidgeting, moving from side to side, all of those things are manifestations of being nervous. Being nervous can have an impact on your decision-making abilities. So when you're in court, you have to be able to think on your feet. And if you're overly nervous, it's going to be more difficult for you to respond um, effectively and appropriately. And also, before the court appearance, when you're preparing for the trial or, or your submission, you have worked out the tactical decisions that you're going to make. You've worked out your strategy. Well, all of that can go out of the window if you're nervous. So, for example, um, I don't know how many of you have been members of sporting teams. So I used to play basketball. And um, when I was really, really nervous, I used to forget what I was supposed to be doing and where I was supposed to be at a particular point in a play. Um, so strategy, decision-making abilities, all of that can go out of the window when you're nervous. Your communication skills can be impacted when you're nervous. So uh, for me, when I'm really nervous, I speak really, really quickly, so fast that I actually lose breath. And I remember attending a really important meeting and all of us at this meeting were sat around the desk. I was the only woman there. I was the only person of colour there. And I desperately, desperately did not want anyone to ask for my input. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Uh, somebody asked me a question and I just reeled off this stream of consciousness. And by the end of my mini speech, um, I had run out of breath and I actually did this. I went, <gasps> because I'd been speaking so quickly that I had no breath left by the end of the speech. Um, and obviously, I wasn't asked for my input after that. But anyhow, um, yeah, so communication can be impacted by your nerves. So let's now look at how you can manage your nerves. And I'm going to start off by giving you some strategies that you can employ 
whilst you're actually in court. The first thing you can do is to confirm your progress. So let me explain what I mean by that. When you are preparing for a court appearance, you wouldn't go into court without any notes whatsoever. That would be a mistake. So for me, I would have notes that have headings in large font. So the headings would represent the issues, the topics, the areas that I want to cover during the court appearance. And underneath each of those headings would be some bullet points. So words and phrases that will prompt me, that will remind me of what I want to say during the court appearance. So confirming your progress is simply ticking off each point that you've made or each area that you've covered during the court appearance. And having a visual representation that you are making progress will have a calming and settling effect on you that will reduce anxiety and nerves. The second strategy that you can employ if you are someone who moves around a lot when you're nervous, so you're swaying from side to side, which we all know is really distracting, um, what you can do is to visualise that you are in an invisible cylinder. And the cylinder uh, runs from the bottom of your feet all the way to the top of your head, and it is very narrow, so you have no place to move to. So you could actually visualise that you're actually that you're in a cylinder. Um, so that might work for you. I used to also advise students to put a piece of paper on the floor and to stand on the paper and to not move um, off of the sheet of paper. That might be something that you might want to consider employing. So those are strategies that you can use to prevent you from moving from side to side or moving around. Um, if you are a fidgeter like me, then you could put your hands behind your back. So if you're standing up addressing the court, you can put your hands, one, one hand behind your back, not both, because it'll look like your handcuffed, but uh, maybe one hand behind your back. You can hold on to the side of the table, the edge of the desk, or if you're lucky enough to have a lectern, you can hold on to the sides of the lectern. Don't hold on for dear life. That's going to look unnatural, but gently hold on to the lectern or the edge of the table. If you are someone who speaks really quickly when they're nervous, what you can do is write at the top of each page of your notes, slow down or pause. And so every time you look at your notes, you'll see at the top of each page those words and that will remind you to slow down. I think a really important strategy is to focus on the objective. So focus on the reason why you are in court today. What is your objective? So it's not about you. It's about achieving the best result for your client. Now that will take the pressure from you. If you know that you have a job to do and it isn't about you, it's about achieving that objective. So get out of your own way. So, so those are some strategies that you can employ um, during the court hearing. But before the court appearance, you can actually employ other strategies. So for example, breathing. For me, I used to find a quiet area in the court building and I used to take long, deep breaths and that would have a calming effect on me. The second thing you can do is to actually become familiar with the court that you're going to be appearing in. So what I suggest you do is you get to court super early, you go into the courtroom if it's open and you familiar... I can never say that word and you familiarise yourself with the layout of the courtroom and where the parties are going to be sitting. So where will you be sitting? Where will your opponent be sitting? Where will your client be sitting? Where will the judge be sitting? Where will the, where will the jury be sitting? All of those things. Familiarise yourself with that, and that's one less pressure on your head that will help you to reduce the nerves and the anxiety. The most important thing that you can do, as far as I'm concerned, 
is to be prepared. Being prepared is like a comfort blanket. If you know your case inside out, you know the facts, if you know what your legal arguments are going to be, if you understand the law, if you know what your questions are going to be, if you know what your structure is going to be, that is going to give you so much confidence and will reduce the anxiety and the nerves. You can also employ positive visualisation techniques. So visualise the outcome that you want to achieve. Visualise what success looks like for you. So what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Visualise a successful outcome. Focus on that. And that will help to reduce the nerves and anxiety. One strategy that I used to employ used to, when I was um, in the early days of practice, was to pretend that it wasn't me in court, it was someone else. So I created an alter ego. Now, Beyonce has an alter ego, so if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. And so I would give this alter ego characteristics that I wanted. So my alter ego had lots of um, charisma, was confident, was authoritative, was knowledgeable about the law and knew the facts of the case. All of those characteristics and things that I wanted for myself, I ascribed to this character. And so when I stood behind the lectern addressing the court, it wasn't me, it was this character. And so that helped to reduce my nerves. Now, I'm not going to suggest it for you because it could lead to all sorts of psychological problems and nobody needs that. So um, it's not something that I employ now, but it's something that helped me in my early days of practice. In conclusion, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. It shows that you are concerned about achieving a successful outcome for your client. It shows that you are um, concerned about your performance. There's nothing wrong with being nervous. And in fact, being nervous is a good thing. However, when your nerves affect your ability to perform competently, then it's a problem. And I would suggest that you work out some strategies that you can employ before the court appearance and during the court appearance that will help to reduce those nerves or to at least ensure that the nerves do not impact your performance. Now, I hope you found this video useful. I would really love to hear the strategies that you employ to help reduce your nerves. See you next time.